What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, a big box good. A six month review of the Polaroid Wave Go digital camera I picked up at Target. It cost $60. Let's go ahead, test it out. In this review, let's explore several of the different functions and test them out to see the overall quality. This first demonstration being video recording. Keep in mind, this camera can record up to 4K, but my memory card inside the camera is capable of only 1080p. Even though this camera lacks in-body image stabilization, autofocus, eye autofocus or tracking or face tracking amongst other things usually found in more expensive digital video camera equipment. This camera at 1080p does a phenomenal job of preserving video quality. Let's go ahead and check it out. Just a very simple video demonstration zooming in on a bicycle. First you saw how clear it was at 1080p, one times zoom out of the box, it looks phenomenal. Not sure how this would look 4K, maybe a little bit sharper. As you can see, a tad grainy, but 1080p still does a great job of holding up. What I think you'll notice is a bit of yellow. It has a sort of yellowish tint or hue to it. Of course, let's take photography after this demonstration and find out if in post editing we can adjust or correct the yellow for a more neutral tone. And last but not least, four times zoom. You can see it's just a little bit granulated, a little bit pixelated, a little bit mushy, maybe smudgy. Okay, this next demonstration is microphone and then photography. So on the front of the camera is a pinhole style microphone flush with the camera body. Not sure how it performs in this situation because of course I'm vlogging and cannot hear. So let me know in the comment section below what you think. So the bad news, my initial complaint from the video demonstration is that it has a yellowish hue or tint. But the good news, as you can see, it's an 18 megapixel camera and it takes extremely sharp images. That being said, in basic photo editing software, all that needs to be done is a simple retouch and then to maybe neutralize it even further, turn it into a simple black and white. So a two-step process and a simple photo editing application can turn a yellow looking photo into a reputable photo that you could use on social media or on a professional profile. Also an issue recording video is a lack of in-body image stabilization, which up to four times zoom you saw in the video demonstration made it hard to take crystal clear video. And the same is true for the photographic side at up to two times zoom. This camera can go up to four times zoom. It still was difficult to get a clear and colorful image. And last but not least, to summarize, how does this camera perform in low light conditions? So I think just doing a bit of cross-examination between video and photo, we can see that the camera under each situation performs fairly the same. Digital zoom in photography and in video, lacks because of a lack of in-body image stabilization. And we also can see that it's the exact same process because the photos look just like the video. They have that same yellow tint. But what does the camera perform like in low light conditions? And because I failed to do this in the video demonstration, but because the camera I think performs so similar to the video, I think it's safe to assume that this profile picture in low lighting conditions is what you can expect the video camera to perform like. So as you can see, the good news is the yellowish tint is completely gone. The bad news, I do not have a video demonstration. But 
Like I was saying earlier, just a simple retouch and maybe turning the photo black and white can actually help you remove the yellow tint. What I would like to note is that the camera and video perform exactly the same. Now, what I love actually about the Polaroid Wave Go is the ergonomics, which I briefly touched upon in the unboxing and first impressions live stream. It's lightweight. It has this rubber grip actually at the bottom, and it's got this sort of mirror-like reflective plastic outer shell, which makes it easy to judge the lighting. But most importantly, the buttons are clicky, they're tactile, and couple that with the orange hand grip, it makes it really simple actually to take selfies, portrait selfies, which is the correct way of taking selfies. It makes it really simple actually to take selfies, portrait selfies, which is the correct way of taking selfies. Now, let's test it underwater. Now, even though a camera like this may lack autofocus, for example, in body image stabilization, which we talked about in previous segments, what professional grade equipment does tend to lack from time to time is the ability to be used underwater. So this camera can actually go down to a depth of 10 feet. It's not waterproof, water resistant rather, because when I opened the port to access the SD card or the micro USB port, I did notice several droplets of water. Not a big deal, but then again, maybe that would suggest keeping this underwater for longer than 30 seconds, I would say, and deeper than 10 feet, maybe not the best idea. And last, but most importantly, not least, adding to its water resistance abilities is the fact that you can transfer photos off of the camera from either the micro SD card slot itself or micro USB. So a bit of redundancy there, even though data is held on the SD card, being able to access data via USB or the SD card is a pretty important function. Anyways, guys, that has been a six month review of the Polaroid Wave Go action camera I picked up at Target. It cost $60. Phenomenal deal, 18 megapixel sensor, great specification, water resistance up to 10 feet, another great specification, a really cool and compact design, and it can record up to 4K video. This is a great buy, it's a really good option. Even though it lacks some of those other important features, this is great for just overall taking pictures and not having to worry about getting it wet. It even has some drop resistance, even though we didn't test it, as you can see, it has a nice rubber casing at one side of the camera to help it bounce if it does drop. Also, we talked about the ergonomics of this camera. Great for shooting portrait or landscape. It's okay, actually, for vlogging. The microphone test, I think, turned out pretty well. I thought the volume came out crystal clear. It was loud. At Target, you can get it for $60. Because I picked it up at Target, that makes it a big box good. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below for questions, and share this video with friends and family. Also, be sure to hit that bell icon to get notified when I post YouTube. Thanks again so much for tuning in. My name is John. I will see you in the next video.